Are you having trouble taking your photography to the next level? Yeah? Well, let's talk about it. Okay, so guys, before we start, just so you know, there is a small chance that this video will turn into a rant. I'm not sure yet, but I can already feel something deep down here. And you know, sometimes the passion just takes over. I can't help it. So just a small warning, it might happen, but we'll see. Let's just do it. Um, okay, so some of you know that in 2016, my photo series Grey Summer Garden won a Press Photo Award. And I started thinking about those photos and that award, and I realized that you don't have to learn a lot if you want to become a great photographer, you just have to learn the right things. The problem is that there's so much information out there these days, and I feel like a lot of aspiring photographers are looking for information in the wrong place, or they're looking for the wrong kind of information because they're trying to cut corners. They focus on camera hack videos and the latest Instagram trends, and then the biggest mistake, they get inspired by their favorite photographer, they want to shoot equally great looking photos, it doesn't work, and then they blame it on editing. So what happens is that they want to run, but they can't walk yet. So instead of using all your energy to learn a million different things, take that same amount of energy to master a few of the most important concepts and aspects of photography. That's the key. First of all, camera settings. What do you really need to know? Because these days camera companies love to market all those new futuristic features and they claim that the camera will take the perfect photo for you. No, don't bother. Number one, the exposure triangle. Aperture, ISO and shutter speed. That's the foundation. Look, when I was shooting my series Grey Summer Garden, the only settings that I adjusted during the day were ISO, shutter speed and aperture. Well, and actually I'm lying now. Because I almost never shoot in full manual mode, I prefer aperture priority mode. So I decide what the aperture is and then the camera will decide what the shutter speed will be. But the thing is, it's not enough if you know how it works. No, you have to master it. You see that? You have to master it. <laughs> yeah, it's really important. You know, I know exactly what a photo will look like if I use ISO 100, aperture f2.8 and a shutter of 1 200th. And I also know how to adjust those settings in specific situations. And it comes naturally, I don't even have to think about it. The exposure triangle, that's the foundation. So forget camera hacks and forget all those new fancy features and settings. First thing you do if you're serious about photography is master the triangle. Oi, Illuminati confirmed. Um, <laughs> okay, and then the exposure triangle's best friend is the histogram. This little graph will tell you how your photo will be exposed because you can never trust your eyes or the screen of your camera. Learn how to read the histogram and again until it comes naturally, until you can read it like you read English or your mother Tongue. Mother tongue, right? Yeah. Anyway, and once you've mastered the histogram and the exposure triangle, then it's time for focal lengths. How focal lengths affect the look of your image and the composition. Same thing again. If I use a 35mm and I'm walking around and I see something that I want to shoot, I know exactly how far or how close I have to be to get the framing that I want. And I also know how blurry the background will be if I shoot a 35mm at f2.8 for example. Okay, and then once you did focal lengths, it's time for autofocus. Autofocus you say, why not manual focus? You know, isn't that what the pros do? No, that's not what the pros do, of course not. I use autofocus 90% of the time. But the thing is, there are different types of autofocus. And manual focus I only use in very specific situations. For example, my series Grey Summer Garden, for that series, I think I used manual focus pretty much all the time because it was a very slow project. Tripod, you know, put the right settings. It, it was very slow and manual focus was the way to go. But anyway, so there are different types of autofocus. Learn what the differences are and when to use which type. Okay, so let's summarize. What tutorials do you have to look for? Exposure triangle, histogram, focal lengths, and autofocus. That's what I think are the foundations, the fundamentals on which you can build your photography 
uh, castle. <sighs> Sorry, I got stuck there. But that's what you need to know before you start learning about all those fancy new camera settings and camera hacks and the latest trends on Instagram. The fundamentals, the basics, foundation. <sighs> I think I'm like, I'm feeling the rant come here. No? I'll try to... <sighs> Let me just drink a little bit. It will help. Okay. So all that is important, but it's not as important as what I'm about to tell you now. Because I truly believe that you can win awards and get assignments with a cheap camera set in full auto mode shooting JPEGs. It is possible, because more important is composition. Guys, especially now that we have this new kind of content creation, social media photography, it's super popular and Composition is what matters. Does it look pleasing, dynamic, interesting? A lot of times you hear people say, story is all that matters. No, not true. Not today on Instagram, social media. A lot of photos these days don't even tell a story anymore. Composition, that's all that matters. It has to look amazing. So learn everything about composition. When should you follow the rules? When should you break the rules? Now look, I'm not saying that story is not important because if you know how to compose a shot and tell a story on top of that, well then you have a winner. If you can do that, then you know that you, you've become a great photographer. But start with composition because you know storytelling is difficult to learn uh, from tutorials. And you know what? The best way to learn both is not from tutorial videos, it'll help, but the better choice is just look at photography, look at the work of other photographers, your favorite photographers, analyze their work, not just look, analyze it, and then even try to copy it, to replicate it, so that you learn how they achieve a certain look. You know, some of the greatest movie directors didn't go to film school, they learned everything from watching a lot of movies and then putting what they saw into practice. Practice, practice, practice. There weren't any tutorial videos back then. Let's take my award-winning series, Grey Summer Garden, as an exa- I love to say that, award-winning series. Hey, I'm proud of it, that's okay, right? Um, but let's take my series again as an example. You know, how it looks, how it feels, how I told that story, it's all based on the work of some of my favorite photographers. I didn't copy them, but I, I was inspired by them. Countless hours I spent analyzing how they tell a story and how they compose their shots. It's the best way to learn, by far. Consume a lot of photography. Okay, and then finally guys, editing. Look, I'm not saying that it's not important, because it is important. But the basics, again, is what matters first. You don't have to know every tool in Photoshop. And you know what? I'll tell you a secret. For my series Grey Summer Garden, I used a preset that I bought online. It wasn't even one of my own presets. Of course, I tweaked it a little bit, you know, a little bit more contrast, bring the highlights down. But most of what you see, what, what it looks like when it comes down to colors, is a preset. Oops. But there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's like this negativity toward presets and I don't get why. Some people say that you're copying someone's work, which is complete BS because look, back in the days, in the film days, every photographer had their favorite type of film to get the look that they wanted. And a lot of photographers used the same kind of film to get the same look. It's just all about trends and, you know, what's popular now, what kind of colors. Bright and, and colorful or dark and moody. So using presets is fine, but, you know, don't forget to learn the basics of photo editing because it is really important. And I guess, you know what, this is the perfect time to shamelessly plug my presets because that's what I am, shameless. <laughs> no, serious, if you want to support my channel, you know, you can still buy my presets on my website, here. Link in the description also. And you're not copying my work if you use them, you know? Use them, learn from them, and then show me, show me what you did. Okay, that's it, wow. 
I feel now that I was like, mm, I have to, to calm down a little bit. I don't think it was a rant, right? Was it a rant? No. No, it wasn't a rant. I don't think so. I do feel like I was a bit all over the place, but yeah, you know, that's the passion. The passion comes out and then I want to go, 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 go. Uh, I want to help you guys, you know? I'm going again. I'm going higher again. <laughs> anyway, so guys, now I hope that I've guided you in the right direction. If you feel stuck, if you feel like you're not growing, think about it. Do you know the basics, the fundamentals? Do you have a foundation first? Because trust me, 90% of what a photo looks like comes from, from that, the basics. And then the editing, the colors, that's just the cherry on top. Okay, I'm just gonna stop because I feel like I keep going and I don't know how long the video is. Whatever, see you next week. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. Uh, I'm about to go, go.